<laughs> Yo, what up, homie? This I'm from the 421. I'm from the 612, bitch. Nigga, I be from Brooklyn, New York. The Brooklyn Center, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got the big old lips. The white fucking bitch, teeth. Your lips is I got the white fucking teeth. Dude, bitch, how white my teeth are some crap white stuff. Look at it's my birthmark right here. <laughs> See this white patch? That's girl, a fucking birthmark, girl, man. Do you know what I'm so self-conscious about? My skin is lighter right here, but it's so, dark. it's so dark right there. We are true Negroes, man. We come from the black hood. I earn this shit. <laughs> Bitch, y'all walking around with your fake-ass chains all the time. Man. Bitch, you don't know me. Man, I own this shit. I had to work for this shit. <laughs> My fucking birthmark is keep showing, man. <laughs> Yo, homes, me too. That's, Homie! This is what happened when we got in the gang. They had to, to initiate us. They had to bleach our necks. <laughs> okay, I got some birthmark going up here, up in here, joint, <laughs> up in this joint. Girl, me too. I need some fucking fried chicken. Part of I need some fried <laughs> fucking chicken. <laughs> Girl, you know mama's making some fried chicken tonight. I need some, you know, we're the fucking I BC. Some Where's green. BC? Where's Henry Big Ego? Man, my ego bigger than Henry Big Ego. He see don't got shit on me. You see these lips? They fucking suck your face off when you kiss them. Ah! That's what it's like. I will like. wrap my lips around your lips and suck your face. <laughs> you wanna talk some shit? I got bigger lips. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? We are from the fucking black hood, niggas. Oh, we got some fucking backup niggas for us, you niggas. <laughs> uh, my name is Noel Anderson. I am an assistant professor at the University of Cincinnati. Probably not for long after this, but that's okay. Uh, I am a practicing artist uh, showing at uh, Tilton Gallery in New York uh, and um, Zedun, Busset in Luxembourg, uh, and some other venues around the world, I guess. I'm not really interested in lectures. I don't really give, I'm sorry, I have to back up, I have to back up. If I say something to offend you, it can't be more offensive than this, but if I say something to offend you, you're more than welcome to walk out, but please feel free to recognize my uh, decision to call on you as you leave. Does everybody dig? Does everybody dig me? Yes. All right, very good, very good. So I, I stumbled across this thing uh, about a few weeks ago, and I've been trying to grapple, you know, I've been trying to wrap my fucking mind around this experience, the experience of this, these uh, two, what I would believe to be white females in 2012 uh, at a university in Minnesota participating in this act, participating in this act participating in this act. So now let me ask the group, this is like a call and response, the old Negro spiritual, a call and response. What do you see? What do you see? Bigotry. Speak up, child. Bigotry. What does that word mean? Hatred. Bigotry means hatred? They're synonymous. Hating people who think aren't you. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. Stand here, ma'am, stand here, stand here, ma'am, stand here. We're gonna try something. I didn't think this was gonna work tonight. We're gonna fucking try it. Ah, uh, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go back there at that computer, yeah, that you were playing with before, and you're gonna Google search the word bigotry. Please, Don Quixote. What else are you all experiencing when you see this, this thing in front of you? Not the thing me, but the thing it. Well, I am an it, kind of, to them. What else are you seeing? What are you experiencing? Ignorance. Ignorance, yes, yes, very good, there's that. Anything else you're experiencing? Culture. Whose culture? Black culture? That's my culture. Is that my culture, please? Double dutch, double dutch, double dutch, double dutch. Oh, oh, please, ma'am. It's white culture. We've had a history of blackface and minstrelry and white people putting on black makeup and pretending to be African-American or African and doing all sorts of terrible things. We even had the first talking movie 
and Al Jolson is the jazz singer. There he is. <sighs> you fucker. That's good. No, 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 no. My students, it's very good, ma'am. One second, ma'am. That's very good. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I do my lecture halls, uh, pack these things. They're packed. People who don't even, not even in the fucking class, they show up to the goddamn things, you see. But they come, and if they say something prominent, I mean significant, I always say, ah, you fucker. It's a good thing. <laughs> they use this term over in Holland. I was called a fucker a lot. A good thing. So there's, there's that. Okay, there's that. Okay, okay. let me grapple with this. Let me, one second, man, because I've got to wrap my mind around it. This is supposedly a portion of my culture. Ah, this is what black culture is. So you're suggesting it's not my culture at all. It's all. It's, it's an artwork, too. American artwork, you'll see, like, black people tame ah, music. Ah, 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 don't move. You stay. You do me a favor. Forget bigotry. Type in, uh... Al Jolson, I would say the jazz singer where Neil Diamond might come up, and I don't want to fucking watch goddamn Neil Diamond. <laughs> you put up uh, Al Jolson, yes? And ma'am, you were saying in the black you wanted to say something. You see privilege. How, what, who's being privileged here? Ah, there's that. We're going to get to that in a second, maybe. I feel like, I feel like they have a... Oh, can you can you play this thing now here? Ah, you fucker. Can you play that for me? Yeah, let's make it bigger. Mammy. Mammy. The sunshine beat, the sunshine wet. But I know where the sunshine gets. Mammy, Mammy, my heart rings are tangled around. Well, Mammy, I, I'm a coming. Sorry, I make you wait. I, I'm coming. I've never seen this I thing big. Trust, I'm not late. Mammy, Mammy. I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles on my mammy. Oh, mammy. <laughs> my little mammy. The sunshine beats, the sunshine sweats. But I know where the sunshine sets. It's on my mammy I'm talking about. Nobody else is. My little mammy. My it's funny, you have to laugh. I tangled around. Alabama. Mammy, I'm coming. I hope I didn't make you wait. Mammy, I'm coming. Oh, God, I hope I'm not late. Mammy, don't you know me? It's a little baby. I walk a million miles. Can you pause it there? Where did you go? You're still back there. I can't see the light. Thank you. You can pause it. Yeah. Let's just pause it, yeah? So that so we can may, maybe make an argument that it came from that, yes? And before. But, but how fucking we no, let's go there for a second. This kind of thing, privilege, this kind of thing in my culture. My culture, my privilege, my privilege, my culture. Do you think, and this is real talk, do you think that those two females, I don't know if to call them ladies or girls yet. I don't know, I don't know if ladies do that kind of activity. Maybe girls do because they're not conscious. Do you think that those females are conscious of that 1920, 1939 experience? Absolutely not. Absolute, oh, uh, absolument. Absolutely not. Then how did they get there? How do we get here in a situation, how, to, to quote Nina Simone, how, how is it possible for the circumstances of a situation like that to exist? That's a real question, not rhetorical. Please. Because it's our, it's our culture, it's our current culture now. How is that our current culture? Well, I mean, the, 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 um, the other youth of the girls. Yeah. They're not educated. Yes, but, ah, but you fucker, no, you must think deeper than that. 
how is it that two females, if in fact we assume from what you say, that they're not conscious of that thing, right? Yes, ma'am, I can't see, yes? Okay, I believe I'm Stevie Wonder and I can only hear, I can't see. <laughs> if we have to assume that they are not conscious of that portion of the concept, of the, that, that kind of historical reference. How do they even recognize that they can pick this material up, put it on their face, and do the thing? Ah, oh, speak up, child. It's hundreds, hundreds of years of, of subconsciousness of this idea of, 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 of race. Do you really believe it's so embedded in her mind? That it just works its way to the surface. She doesn't even think, or they don't even think about it. General culture. I don't know what that word. Who said this? Ah, oh, child, please. You, you, you shook the head. I wish we'd have had that on camera. You didn't shook the head on us. You said behavior is how. Okay, go to that. I'm gonna come here in one second. Just a second, man. Go to that place. Double Dutch. Double Dutch. Double Dutch. What do you mean behavior is taught? So. Not so now it's not their fault. They're not culpable of the act. Oh, no, totally. So why would we blame the parents? Fuck the parents. It's their fault. You can overcome what you into. Can you overcome or do you undergo? There's a, okay, there's, a, there's this great, uh, oh my God, there is this great French philosopher. He is dead now. His name is Janicout. He wrote this amazing text about how human beings uh, should not become transhuman or posthuman because if you do, you're overcoming your human condition rather than undergoing. To undergo means you participate in the act and get it done. To overcome is to say, I'm not going to deal with that shit. I'm just going to keep going. That's how he defines it. So are you talking about like going beyond and just not dealing with it or actually undergoing the transformation and dealing with the issue? That's a real question, ma'am. Well, it's a real question, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I would say that most people would choose to overcome because undergoing the struggle and it's painful and it makes you something, you don't know what you'll become, maybe, but it's it's a chore, it's not a chore, it's 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 work. That's a hard word. That's a four-letter word, you fucker. That's a four. I got students, man. They be like, man, but we got to work, and they say it like it's a bad thing. It's work. It's work. So that that gets to this weird territory of like uh, reality as it is versus reality as it appears. It's much easier for me to suggest that this or the wars or anything else that I don't really want to have to deal with in my purview is not real. I can marginalize it. Oh, a, a prime example. And if you lie in this experiment, I will call you on it. I'm going to ask you a question. May I ask you a question, group? Yes. The question is this. Ah, maybe it's like a, it's like a two-part question, a sub-part question, a tri-part question, a question, a series of questions, a plural. That's a single. If, ah, when you're driving, I assume we have drivers in this room. Very good. And you, you, you see, like, you go into the stoplight. It's always at a stoplight. It has to be at a stoplight. That's how they fucking get you. Like lawyers, like vultures, like car dealers. You see a homeless person on the street. They're holding up the sign. And you say to yourself, oh, shit, please don't go red. Don't go red. Don't go red. And then you get stuck at that red light. Do you always stare at that person? Or do you just like kind of blankly stare forward and participate in your own space, thinking this person doesn't really exist? That's a real question. Let's get real. Reality as it appears versus reality as it really is. I had it happen today. I'll, I guess I'll confess first, and then you can confess after me. Espiritu Santo. I was driving away from the gym today because I love to get buff. I want to get physical, you know. Not like Jane Fonda or something. I think she's, no, it's Olivia Newton-John. Not like Olivia Newton-John, but I want to be strong. And I was leaving the gym, and I got to a red light, and I said, oh, shit, don't go red. It was actually yellow, and I was going to fucking floor it. But you couldn't floor it because there was somebody in front of me, you see? And I had to stop. And there was a homeless white man on the corner, right next to my car. On the left, mm, with a sign, a uh, veteran will work for food. You know how it goes. They all have the same sign. Maybe I'll piss you off now. Mm. And instead of engaging that individual in a simple look, just to acknowledge their presence in life, I stared forward, pretending like he wasn't real. 
So now I'll throw it back on you. Do you ever have those experiences? This is a silent, this is a yes. Thank you. Now we're getting real. I've confessed. You must confess to me. We're sharing things. We're going to be blood people, you know, blood brothers, this kind of thing, but not to gender. So then my question would be this, or maybe not that. Maybe it's a rhetorical, but maybe someone can answer. How complicit are you in the situation? Speak up, child. We make it safe. The car is safe. The video is safe. There's something between you and... Ah, there's a distance, right? There's such a distance. That's what I like to call televisual. I mean, tele meaning, uh, if you break it down etymologically, tele is like distance, visual is vision, so it's distance vision. It's like when you, when you, this is why wars don't really affect people as well as when you're away from them as when you're in there getting fucking bombed or you're getting pushed out of Ram, Ram, Rama... Ramadani? Is that what they called it now in Yemen? It was not Yemen. It's in Iran. No, it's in Iraq. ISIS is here. They're coming. They're pushing people out. When I watched it on TV this morning, I had to make a quick decision. Would anybody like to hear my decision? Yeah. Ah, yes. And then we're going to vote on whether my decision was bad. And then you're going to chastise me or say, it's okay. No, we understand. We do it all the time. I'm about to be a bad American or a good American. I, uh, what did I do? I had the decision, was I going to watch these refugees, uh, you know, get pushed on CNN out of their territory? Or was I going to watch Dr. Phil, where a housewife was complaining about her spoiled teenager, who happened to be white, which I thought was kind of interesting, because Dr. Phil very rarely puts people of color on his show. We don't, we, we are like hostages. We make bad hostages, we make bad ratings. Nobody wants to come and see us. So what did I do? Does anybody know? Let's guess. Let's play the guessing game. Did I choose Dr. Phil, or did I watch refugees get pushed out of their territory, or people become refugees? This is a real question for the audience. The Speak up. You, watch the refugees. you said that so hopeful. She was like, you watched the refugees. Who else believed I watched the refugees? Well, you obviously watched them, or you wouldn't know them. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> Fuck, you got me. Okay, okay. I admit, I watched them for like two seconds, but then I saw Dr. Phil and thought, oh, I really don't want to deal with this because it's too hard for me. It's too. I was sitting on my comfortable couch with the windows open and the birds were singing, and I think the guy from that weird uh, 1950 Technicolor Disney thing with zippity doo dah zippity yay was outside singing with the fucking birds. Uncle Remus, I think it was. And I thought to myself, this is so much more better for my life right now than watching these people get pushed out of their, their spaces. So maybe the question is flipped back on you now that you've experienced it through me. I am the filter. I'm just not real. I'm not here, I'm not real. Are you complicit in the situation? Not just from televisual. Are you really complicit in the situation? Are you really, com does anybody, okay, how about this? Uh, Matt, complicit is such a complex word for me because I'm not that smart. Uh, do you play a role in the situation? How about that? This is a real question. Do you or do you not? Yeah. Who said yes? You play a role, ah. So who has privilege in that situation? Ah. So because, please go there. Yeah, who's, who's the we? That's a good question. Well, even the people getting pushed out of their home might be silent. Who is the we? Ah, okay, okay. So then let's go back to the, the Mrs. Ah. We go, ah, here's how the sociogram works. We go boom, boom, we go hit. Who had, well, you said this word earlier, privilege. What does that word mean? When Can you type the word privilege in for me and give me an image? I like to see if it's always white people. Can you, can you give me, can you tell me what privilege means? I probably is. Um, you, I don't, no, no, give me an image, let's image search. Ah, so now our words are failing us, even though they're supposed to be used to help us explain things. Ah, please. Come now, come now, come now. Yeah, did him out. Like deer hunter, did him out. 
You're not gonna like scream and go, oh, you're gonna come up here, you're gonna tell a story. Nice to meet you, by the way. Your name? Megan. Ah, no, a Megan pleasure to meet you. you. Please tell the group um, uh, your name. Uh, they know my name. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, they don't know your name. Okay. Megan? Megan. Welcome to AA, Megan, please. Have a problem shopping? So do I, especially at two in the morning. I guess the most uh, powerful uh, thing I've experienced was I graduated from grad school from Parsons in 2008, and I was living in the West Village, which is in a very wealthy area. Mm. And then I moved to Flatbush Avenue. Oh, was, yes. Right off of Flatbush and Maple Street. And I was living in a Section 8 building because a friend of mine um, had an apartment there for $650 a month. So. Must be nice. <laughs> it was very nice, but um, a good friend of mine from the new school who was studying social work. Um, I told her where I was moving. Mm -hmm. She's like, you know, that's not a real estate neighborhood for a white person. Mm -hmm. I was like, good to know. But she's like, but they're not going to bother you because, you know, she said, um, it's really bad to say. No, it's um, not. She said, even like, because she knew the building that I was living in off of, like, right off the Q train, and it's not a great building. Um, uh, and she said, she must be really uncomfortable. She's like, an African American, she said, a black guy is not going to mess with you because you're white and you're going to call the cops and they're going to come and arrest that person. But if you see black on black violence, the cops are probably not going to come. It's true. And I didn't believe that until um, I met an officer, an Israeli officer, who I told where I was living. He's like, man, that is not a safe area to, for you to live in. It's like, what time do you get home? And I was like, 11.30. He's like, you better be careful. Mm. And I did live there for five years. And um, the, the gang that the drug dealer where I knew where he lived, he, they, he would have like a crowd of people out. But when you stand up for yourself and you tell them, this is where I live, I'm part of this, and you recognize and you look at the people in their eyes and you tell them that this is my home too, mm -hmm. then they start to respect you. That's what's so up. Living there for five years and knowing the people and the families and the kids and the fathers, it was really an amazing experience to live down there. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice. Thank that's you, That's how I can describe privilege. That's, of course. You, if, 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 you, if you ever knew uh, Merriam-Webster or something, they would probably not have you write definitions for the, for the dictionary or OED either. But the definition was quite nice, you see. Sometimes definitions are best with the examples rather than just the words. It's so hard to understand what the word discursive means because the definition is so terrible. It's, it's like a, a, a pharmacon. A pharmacon is something that both heals and kills. Uh, discursive is both logical and random. It makes no sense to me, but that was good, very good. Hmm. But the problem I keep having now that we're talking about this as a collective in AA is that I have to recognize my own privilege in the situation too. How do I mean? Can someone tell me how I mean? How, do I, how am I privileged in the situation even though I am not white and rich? Speak up. You're privileged because you get to change the channel. I have that privilege. I have that privilege. There's another, there's that privilege. Ah, that's good. But there's a deeper privilege going down. I mean, it's fucking deep. It's in the body, man. It's past the body. It's in the soul, if you believe in that. That's actually existing in everybody in this room right now. I'll give you a hint. University. Speak up. There's that. Speak up. It's academia. I have this, I give this like this weird lecture every year for my students uh, in one of my courses, and I'll wrap up. I'm sorry if I run over. It'll only be like two more minutes, I think. Uh, and uh, may I tell you the story? May I tell you the story? Yeah. Ah, thank you, you fucker. I always give, well, of course, I always give this lecture about, uh, I give this text uh, by this guy by the name of Frankfurt, uh, and he talks about, uh, he defines the word bullshit. And while we're reading Frankfurt's bull on bullshit, we're also reading Leotard's uh, The Post, uh, The Human uh, Condition, On the Human Condition. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and both of them start to talk about how someone thinks of bullshit, and the university isn't bullshit, but the university, and much like Bardot seems to suggest, that the university is a place of leisure. Why is the university a place of leisure? This is a real question for the collective. How is the university a place of leisure? You're in it right now, ma'am, yes, ma'am. She is real. 
Shit is real. Shit is real, isn't it? I, I, I hate to, I hate to like drop the bomb on some of you people, man. But you're gonna graduate soon, some of you fucks, and it's gonna get real fast because Uncle Sam's gonna come for that money. Uncle Sam comes for that check fast. He is a thieving son of a bitch, but he comes for that money. When I had my degree, my first degree, I was washing dishes on third shift at Steak and Shake. And I would come in, I was terrible. I had moved home, I was broke, but I still loved life because I had a degree. Like Kanye said, I had a degree. <laughs> and the shit got real because people would come in on a Friday night who graduated me from, for, with me from high school, who had, didn't even go to college, driving beautiful cars, you know, with these lovely looking women or, or men, whatever their persuasion. Uh, and I would be back there with a fucking hairnet <laughs> and trash all over my shirt while my GED manager would say, no, someone plot clogged up the toilet, you need to go plunge that some bitch. I'd be like, what? Oh my God. Oh, I would cry. And then I would think about it, I was like, at one time I was in a, in a situation, the university, where I could totally turn off a part of reality and live through leisure. And I didn't even think about how leisurely my situation was. I didn't even think about it at that time. I didn't think about it. I had, in a weird way, become a true American. I had totally been able to turn off the shit for four years and live in this space where you did a lot of drinking, you did a lot of partying, and occasionally you went and, you know, you studied or something. You, what was that four-letter word? Work? I would work a little bit. So then I would implore the collective, this being the collective here now, in this time, in this temporal space, to think about how leisure really functions in your life to think about how televisual experience really functions in your life, not just TV, but distance viewing. To think about how complicit you really fucking are in the system. I may not be over there across the pond dealing with this shit, but it's really a part of me. And it's really weird. I, maybe it's a part of me because I believe in the human condition and the universality of things. And I believe in like what Dewey talks about, how what Tom, John Dewey talks about my experience. Uh, we in this space, the duality of this thing, even though he doesn't believe in duality, we are breathing each other's air back and forth, oscillating. We may not experience it in our minds, but it's really happening. I would be, uh, I would advocate once this is over in the next 10 seconds, 30 seconds, for you all to really think about how complicit you are in the fucking system. Not just the university, because the university is my shelter. I love my university. I have health insurance, y'all. It helps. <laughs> However, I do recognize that I am complicit in the system, no matter my race, my color, my gender. You dig me? Do you dig me? Yes. Thank you for letting me come. I really appreciate it. You all have a nice day.